Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, OnPay. Without them, we could not be sharing these stories. Today on Atlanta Business Radio, we have Sean Langton with CoreView. Welcome, Sean. Thank you very much, Lee. It's great to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about CoreView. How are you serving folks? Sure. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, CoreView is a enterprise SaaS solution that helps IT leaders manage the complexity of Microsoft 365 and other SaaS applications in their uh, in their SaaS stack. Now, um, what was the genesis of the idea? How did the business get started? Yeah, great question. Our founders uh, started as systems integrators working to actually go build this solution over and over uh, in various uh, companies and you know, kind of looked at each other one day and said, maybe there's a product here. Uh, as they built that product out and started testing it with their clients, they realized that there was a market for it. Um, ultimately, they uh, they went full time into building CoreView, uh, and it's been a journey ever since. And then, um, so when that was built, then you had to just kind of it was just a matter of just rolling it out to other people that were kind of immersed in the Microsoft environment. Yeah. So initially, uh, CoreView began as a tool just for managing Microsoft 365, and that's still where uh, you know our, our our most powerful superpowers lie. Um, and of course, that's a huge, complex space with you know, hundreds of millions of users uh, around the world. Um, but we saw an opportunity to even go beyond what Microsoft, uh, go beyond the Microsoft ecosystem, and start looking at how can we bring in other SaaS applications into that management layer. Uh, and that means that we give those IT leaders who are really familiar with the Microsoft world superpowers in Microsoft, uh, but also let them go out and master all of the SaaS uh, in their in their enterprise. So now, was that um, kind of a monumental shift, or was that kind of a slight pivot? It's um, we we jump started it via an acquisition that we made about two years ago. Um, we were able to bring in a really talented team who had already built out API integrations for hundreds of SaaS apps. And then we've been linking those in through our, our platform, our main product that we call Core Suite. Um, and so we're releasing those out um, in various ways. You know, the most exciting way that we build that in is via a set of workflow applications that uh, that let IT operators build low code or no code workflows to execute inside of um, inside of the core suite platform. And what it does is takes a process that might've taken, uh, you know, a week to do. Now an IT operator might be able to do it in a day using core view. And if they, they build out those workflow automations, they might be able to do it in a minute. Um, and so that sort of acceleration is really valuable. <clears throat> At first, when we launched that, it was only for Microsoft um, related tasks. Uh, now, as we build in those other API hooks, we can use that workflow engine to touch every SaaS app uh, in an organization stack, uh, which just makes it even more powerful. So you can do all the things that are really critical uh, related to your Microsoft environment. And usually for large organizations, that's at the core of most of their technology. It's, it's tied through from all of collaboration to identity management, uh, databases, et cetera. And so most processes start and end somewhere with Microsoft, but also many, many processes have other applications in the loop. And so by adding that in, uh, we've been able to, to introduce it slowly to our customers, but in a way that we think is really unique and powerful. So how important is kind of nurturing and growing your international partner network? Uh, we have a partner network that's distributed um, around the world. So we've got operations in Europe and the United States, um, Middle East, Asia, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Um, so it's quite important for us to nurture all those partners. We're also partnered closely with a lot of Atlanta-based firms 
um, you know, we've, we find that, uh, you know, there's, there's good talent everywhere. And so we've built out a team that can, uh, you know, we, we tend to think globally with everything we do, um, despite being headquartered here in Atlanta. Now, uh, if you were giving advice to other kind of enterprise level organizations, um, can you talk about how to implement a successful kind of partner program? Because I think that that's an underutilized resource and a, a way to grow. Yeah. It, and we're fortunate, you know, and I have um, strong feelings about how partner organizations can and should work in, in different types of SaaS businesses. Um, we're really lucky at CoreView because there's already such a, a deep wealth of understanding and expertise um, and talent for within within large partner organizations uh, around Microsoft, around uh, selling the services, around supporting the, the implementation and maintenance of those um, deployments, uh, helping people migrate to and from uh, you know various different incarnations of Microsoft. And so we're able to tap into that <clears throat> in a few different ways. Um, you know, the, firstly, we can help make those people's lives easier and make their customers' lives easier. And, and the best partners, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to help their customers. Um, and so tapping into that means finding ways to really uh, show them how the customers will benefit from the CoreView solution. Um, but the other piece is uh, enabling those partners to really, you know, they're running businesses as well, and to really help them find a way to make uh, a profit off of CoreView. Um, and we do that by helping our partners enable services uh, post-sale. So setting up CoreView, uh, you know, there's the immediate value that customers will get, but there's also, um, you know, to really build out every element uh, that CoreView is capable of doing can take a lot of work and our partners um, that we work with best, uh, you know, learn our platform inside and out. Some of them know it better than we do. And they're able to help our customers build out the, um, you know, build out the workflows that I was describing, build out uh, really granular, least privileged access models, which means that every employee is able to do exactly what they need to do, but they're not allowed to do anything that they're not supposed to do. Uh, which is a really critical component for a lot of customers' uh, security policies and compliance. Um, all of that can take time to manage. <clears throat> We're happy to enable our customers to do that directly, but really a lot of enterprise customers would rather have um, an expert third party come in and just solve the problem for them. So that's where we see uh, a big opportunity uh, to work with our partners. So now you're um, kind of new to CoreView. Uh, can you talk about what attracted you to this challenge? Yeah, I think that uh, when I came in, uh, I saw a, uh, a great technology, a, a really big market that's growing quickly. Um, and as I met the founders and some of the people at the company, you know, that, that's always an important part as well. And I think that there was an immediate connection there. But, uh, you know, kind of coming back to <clears throat> the size of the market opportunity, uh, that's always something that gets me excited. And when we see you know, through the, through 2020, uh, the whole world learned to work remotely. Um, and there was a massive adoption of SaaS tools within the enterprise. Those SaaS tools, um, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of stories of success, you know, Zoom grew by 5,000% or whatever, but the, the biggest dollar story of SaaS in the pandemic was Microsoft 365. And the acceleration of that adoption um, was tremendous. It, it outpaced all of Microsoft's forecasts for how quickly companies were going to adopt 365. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, it created just a, a ton of motion. And when there's a lot of motion, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I actually think about it uh, like when you wake up late to catch a flight and you quickly throw everything in your bag, you race to the airport, you make it there, you get to the hotel and you unpack and you realize that, you know, you forgot to pack your pants. It's, you know, every company managed to get to 365. They made it to the cloud. They got all of their employees uh, operating remote. Um, and now that they're there, 2021 is going to be a story of how do we get back to the level of, you know, compliance, certainty, tidiness um, that we had when we were operating in this previous model, which was on-prem. And I think everybody understands that SaaS uh, is the way of the future. 
but a lot of people got there sooner than they expected and they really need help uh, managing Microsoft 365 and managing their entire IT um, software stack uh, in this new world. And so that just to me seems like a big opportunity to help businesses uh, and of course, big opportunity to grow CoreView. Now, intuitively, that seems obvious to you, but for your clients or potential clients, what is kind of the symptoms of the problems that might soon appear? Yeah, so one of the, um, and forgive me if I get too technical here, but one of the uh, big differences between an on-prem deployment of Microsoft 365 and a cloud deployment is that Microsoft prefers you to put everything into what they call a single tenant, which means that you take all of your different offices and business units and acquisitions and geographic uh, entities and you smash them all into one big pool. Um, so a lot of companies used to rely on the uh, you know almost geographic segregation that came from having <clears throat> these different on-premise deployments of Microsoft. Um, and when they use that Microsoft best practice for 365 and put it all in one single tenant, um, you can imagine some of the trouble that it would create if uh, you know people were counting on these things being walled off by uh, you know logical separations of different on-premise servers to now have everything mixed together. Um, it means that you know somebody who was responsible for the the French sales office might now be able to see and do workloads that affect the whole company. Um, so that's one of the most uh, most obvious. Uh, issues you know, from a technical perspective. And what that means is that it breaks all kinds of um, security and compliance tasks. It makes a lot of tasks that used to be relatively simple, way more complex and time consuming. It means that a lot of tickets that, a, uh, that an IT operator might be working on are having to get escalated up to a central IT person in order to be able to be performed um, with the right levels of security. And so all that mixes together and companies are seeing... <clears throat> Um, you know, three big challenges, which are around efficiency of getting their work done. Uh, the ROI from all the software that they bought, you know, are they really using everything that they uh, intended to use? Uh, are there things that they are paying for that they're not using? Um, and then uh, risk mitigation, both from a cybersecurity perspective and from a governance perspective, just making sure that they're doing everything they need to be doing. And so CoreView really comes in to help with all three of those um, the efficiency, the ROI, and the risk mitigation. So now uh, when someone decides, okay, let, we're going to bring CoreView, uh, at, we're going to have them join the team uh, in essence and help us kind of bring out the most value from this investment we've already made. Is there anything that happens kind of noticeably from the you know individual user standpoint? Like if all of a sudden is it like, hey, you know what? When we do Teams... It just seems like the video is better. Or the audio is better. Like, are, are we seeing mm -hmm. like some tangible kind of before and after differences where it's like, wow, I can see that this really is an improvement and this is working for us. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the uh, most of what CoreView solves should be invisible to the end user. So if you're you know working in any job, but it uh, in your company and you're using Microsoft tools to run your life, um, CoreView should be pretty invisible to you. CoreView is really built for the IT operators. Um, if you're working in the help desk or if you're a systems engineer, or a, you know, global admin, then your life is going to be dramatically improved because instead of finding 15 logins uh, to do your work, instead of having to escalate things up uh, through an endless chain, uh, instead of having to do a whole bunch of button clicks, you've got automation um, and different security policies that let you do your work faster. Um, what that can mean for the end users is that they'll get faster responses from IT. So if you need something done, um, CoreView can help IT do it before you even knew that it was a problem, or they can help IT do it much faster. And then we also have tools that are rolling out to help IT teams, for example, improve uh, the usage of teams. So you may find out that instead of having a uh, you know a thousand Teams channels because everybody and their mother is making one and setting them up in different ways, that you might see that kind of Teams bloat shrink down, look look a lot more streamlined, um, be governed better. You might notice that when you are having network issues that affect call quality, um, IT can see that more uh, more easily and find out exactly how to fix it. Um, so those would be the the end user impacts. 
Um, but really, we work to help IT teams do their jobs better. Now, if there's somebody out there, um, who is the, the, the right kind of target for you that you would like to uh, speak to that would help you in your business? Is it the IT folks, the chief information officer? Yeah, IT leaders are generally where we make the sale, um, working with large organizations. Um, but we, you know, we also love speaking with global admins and even help desk operators. You know, we learn, we, we can learn a lot about the, the challenges that a business is facing uh, by talking to those folks and, and educating them on how CoreView can help. Um, but ultimately, uh, given the scope of what CoreView is, uh, is solving, we tend to work with, you know, VP and C-level leaders uh, in IT organizations. And if there was one out there that was listening and they wanted to have more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the website or the best way to get a hold of you? Coreview.com is the place to find us, uh, spelled just like you'd expect. Uh, and that's because we help give you a better view into what's at the core of your SaaS stack, which is, uh, for most large enterprises, uh, Microsoft 365. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on all the success and, and uh, good luck going forward. Thank you so much, Sean, for sharing your story today. Thank you, Lee. It's been a pleasure. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com.